What's going on, everybody? Ryan's Baseball Roundup here. Hope everyone is having an amazing day. And today in this video, we're going to be grading every NL East team's offseason. So comment down below which NL East team you think had the best offseason. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And let's get straight into the video. Alright, so the first team we're going to talk about in today's NL East video is the Miami Marlins. Now, the Miami Marlins surprised a lot of people last year when they made the playoffs, even though they had that outbreak of the virus. So let's see which moves they made in this offseason. The first move the Miami Marlins made was they signed relief pitcher Anthony Bass to a two-year deal for $5 million. Anthony Bass had a successful 2020 season as the Blue Jays closer, and this is a good move by the Marlins because the Marlins need pitching help, and Anthony Bass had a good season last year, so he'll help to keep that up in 2021. The next move they made was they traded for reliever Dylan Floro from the Dodgers. In Dylan Floro's last three years with the Dodgers, so he had a 3.10 ERA. So this is another good move by the Marlins to bolster a bullpen that needs some help right now with another veteran relief pitcher that has had success in the past. The next move they made was they signed Ross Detweiler to a one-year deal. Ross Detweiler is a reliever that had had a successful year with the Chicago White Sox last year. But other than that year last year, from the most part, Ross Detweiler has been a below average reliever. So you don't really know what you're going to get from him. He could be good last year, but in his 10-year major league career, he's only had three seasons with an ERA below a 3.50. So that move was all right. And I also think he, his season last year was somewhat lucky because he was in the 7th percentile in hard hit percentage, meaning that 93% of the league's pitchers gave up less hard hits than him. So he just got lucky when the ball was put in play. It was like a line out to short or a deep fly ball to center or something like that. The next move the Marlins made was they signed Adam Duvall to a one-year deal for $5 million. I think this move is a steal by the Marlins because Adam Duvall has shown in the past that he can hit for power and play okay defense. And power hitters, the Marlins don't have too many of those power hitters in their lineup right now. Adam Duvall usually hits for a low batting average and hits around 20 to 30 home runs. So I like this move. So that was all the move the Marlins made. So their grade I gave them was a B- minus because I would have liked to see them grab like a veteran starting pitcher to bolster their rotation because they have young pitchers that are still trying to learn their way, like Sixto Sanchez. They did sign Gio Gonzalez to a minor league deal, but I would like to see them sign like a more like pitcher that's still currently good right now pitcher. Uh, next team we got is the Philadelphia Phillies. The first move the Philadelphia Phillies made was they signed Archie Bradley to a one-year deal for $6 million. From 2017 to 2020, Archie Bradley has had a 2.95 ERA in his time with the Diamondbacks and Reds combined. So Archie Bradley has been a solid closer for the Diamondbacks in his career. So I like this move by the Phillies because the Phillies had the worst bullpen ERA in all of baseball last year. I think it was around like six for their total bullpen ERA. So they desperately, desperately needed bullpen help. The next move they made was they signed, re-signed JT Real Muto to a five-year deal for $115 million. This is a very, very good move by the Phillies because JT Real Muto is without a doubt the best catcher in baseball. If you think not, then you're tripping, let me tell you. From 2016 to 2020, JT Real Muto is averaging 24 home runs, 83 RBIs, with a 336 on base percentage, 466 slugging for 162 game average. Th those are just straight up dominant numbers from the catcher position. Well, there's not much offense there. And the, the Phillies desperately needed to re-sign him. Because without him, it would have just been like Harper and Reese Hoskins with Alec Bohm in that lineup. And they really needed another offensive firepower player in that lineup. The next move they made was they re-signed D.D. Gregorius to a two-year deal for $28 million. This was a good move because they were kind of in need of a shortstop. D.D. Gregorius isn't really going to like be anything special for them but he's going to at least get the job done. And they signed a lot of relievers to minor league deals that have proven in the past to be capable to pitch at a high level in the major leagues. So let me list off a couple of those names. 
Hector Rondon, Brandon Kinsler, and Tony Watson. I gave the Phillies a B because even though they didn't really get any like super good relievers besides Archie Bradley, they still got some veterans. And I think like Brandon Kinsler and Tony Watson can possibly make an impact for that Philadelphia team this year. The next team we're going to talk about is the Atlanta Braves. First move the Atlanta Braves made was they signed Drew Smiley to a one-year deal for $11 million. Trust me, I know last year Drew Smiley had a great year with the Giants because I'm a Giants fan, so I watched every start he had with them. He had 42 strikeouts in 26 innings with the Giants. He had an injury earlier in the season, but that was just like straight-up dominance from him when he was healthy. So I think that's a good move because the Braves have a lot of like young pitchers in that rotation. So he can be like a, their 4-5 or five starter, and he can get a lot of strikeouts for them and just like teach the young pitchers how to like get their work ethic straight and all that. The next move they made was they signed Charlie Morton to a one-year deal for $15 million. Charlie Morton had a down year last year with the Rays, but I think he can bounce back because he has a wicked curveball, and he has had a couple good seasons before that season. It wasn't just like a fluke. Like, he made the all-star team with the Astros, and he pitched great in the playoffs for them. The next move they made was they re-signed Marcelo Zuna to a four-year deal for $65 million. Last year, Ozuna led the league in home runs, RBIs, and total bases. The only problem for the Braves with him is that he plays terrible defense in any outfield position you put him in. And so they were hoping that they would have the DH in the National League. And unfortunately for them, this year they didn't implement that. Although I think they will implement it next year. So he's going to have to play some like bad defense in the outfield. But his offense makes up for it. I gave the Braves a B plus because they, they bolstered their rotation and they don't have too many holes on their team. So they didn't really need to do a lot. The only thing I would, would have recommended they do is maybe sign like a bullpen arm because they lost Mark Melanson when he signed with the Padres. Next team we're going to talk about is the New York Mets. The New York Mets had a very, very active offseason. The first move they made was they re-signed Marcus Stroman and offered him the qualifying offer, which is one year for $18.5 million. Marcus Stroman was injured all of last year, but from what we've seen from Marcus Stroman before that, he's a good pitcher in a stacked rotation with that team because you got Jacob deGrom, Noah Syndergaard when he comes back, and then you got Marcus Stroman. That, that's pretty beastly. Then they signed Trevor May to a two-year deal for $15 million. This is a good move because Trevor May is a great swing and miss pitcher. So I like that move to bolster their bullpen because they lost Justin Wilson to the Yankees, which we'll talk about in next video coming up. They, signed, they then signed James McCann, the catcher, to a four-year deal for $40 million. And then James McCann is an elite framer. And in the past two years, he, he's had breakout years offensively. It's just a matter of if he can maintain that offensive production because last year he was the backup catcher in Chicago to Yasmani Grandal. So hopefully for Mets fans he'll be able to keep up that offensive production he had in the past two seasons. And then they also traded for Francisco Lindor and Carlos Carrasco from the Indians. What they had to give up in return was Ahmed Rosario and Andres Jimenez. I think this is a great move, getting one of the best shortstops in the major leagues. It's debatable whether it's him, Tatis, or Story, but either way, he's one of the best three shortstops in the major leagues. And then they also got Carlos Carrasco, who can be like a veteran leader in that dugout, but he, he has had elbow issues in spring training, so we'll see if he's ready for opening day or not. The next move they made was they signed Aaron Loop to a three- one-year deal for $3 million, and Aaron Loop has been pretty good in the past with a 2.52 ERA with the Rays last season, and he has great command of his pitches. The next move they made was they signed Albert Almora, who had previously played for the Cubs, to a one-year deal. Albert Almora plays great defense, and he's fast, and that's about it, but he's not terrible as like a backup outfielder 
just like a death piece in case someone gets injured. So that move was all right. Then they signed Jonathan VR to a one-year deal for $3 million. Jonathan VR is an infielder that can play multiple spots on the infield. He can play short, second, even third at times for you. He's got some nice speed. And I also like him as a dev piece in case like J.D. Davis or someone like that gets injured. And then the next move they made was they signed Kevin Pillar to a one-year deal for $5 million. Kevin Pillar, I really like him because I watched him succeed with the Giants in that one season and he hit like 20 home runs. He's super fun to watch. He, pl- he plays great defense. He puts his body on the line when he tries to catch fly balls and stuff. He's super fun to watch. I like him as a backup outfielder with the Mets. The last move they made was they signed Taiwan Walker to a two-year deal for $20 million. Taiwan Walker has struggled in the past in his career. But last year, once he got traded from the Mariners to the Blue Jays, he had a 1.70 ERA in 26 innings with them. So I like this move because he's shown in those 26 innings that he's like getting his bearings together with with that team. So I think he can succeed and have another good year in 2021. I gave the Mets an A plus because they were able to grab one of the best shortstops in baseball, a solid starting pitcher, and some nice bullpen arms. The last team we're going to talk about in today's video is the Washington Nationals. The first move the Washington Nationals made was they traded Josh Bell. They traded for Josh Bell in exchange for two prospects. I really like Josh Bell on the Nationals because they already had two offensive beasts in Trey Turner and Juan Soto. And I think Josh Bell fits good in that lineup because he can switch hit and he's a nice power hitter. So then they also signed Kyle Schwarber to a one-year deal for 10 million dollars you pretty much know what you're going to get with Kyle Schwarber anywhere from 25 to 30 home runs with around 150 strikeouts a season and like a a low like batting average in like around the 220 range Kyle Schwarber is okay but I'm not too high on him personally they then signed Brad Hand to a one-year deal for four million I like this move for the Nationals because Brad Hand has had a solid closer role with the um, Indians and the Padres before that. And he's going to do a good job replacing Sean Doolittle, who was the closer last year. Next move they made was they signed John Lester to a one-year $5 million contract. John Lester doesn't sound like he's going to be ready for opening day because in spring training, he had his thyroid gland removed, which I'm not really sure what that is because I ain't no doctor for being honest. But John Lester in the past two seasons has struggled pitching with the Cubs. So let's see if he can bounce back with the Nationals. Because the Nationals have a pretty deep rotation. You got Steven Strasburg, Max Scherzer, Patrick Corbin. So he's pretty good as a four starter. Because in most teams he would be like a three starter. So so there will be less pressure on him with all those other um, good pitchers on that team. I gave the Nationals a B because I like the Josh Bell move, but then I like the Brad Hand move also, but the John Lester and the Kyle Schwarber moves were just okay, so that's why I gave them a B. If, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like on the video down below. Other than that, this has been Ryan's Baseball Roundup, and I'm out. Peace.